Uh, this is John Canalopoulos, so this could be a very interesting interview. Our patient here is a uh, 47-year-old gentleman who is visiting us from uh, uh, a foreign country. Um, through our email communications with our team, uh, he has expressed uh, the fact that he was diagnosed with pellucid marginal degeneration. We have had the opportunity to evaluate his uh, Pentacam uh, uh, cornea tomographies, and uh, in those images, um, it is evident that we're dealing more here with oblique keratoconus rather than pellucid. Pellucid usually has very thin uh, uh, or better thinning of the cornea at the very uh, inferior part of the cornea. Uh, here under the pachymetry maps, although there's a claw-like appearance of the um, topography, the thickness maps show thinning of the cornea mainly infrotemporally and not at the very, very inferior peripheral cornea. So this, in my opinion, is very commonly mislabeled as pellucid marginal degeneration, even by some of the software that plug the devices. Um, we nevertheless uh, consider this as oblique keratoconus, as it's most common. We evaluate this mainly with the IgD and ISV, and we're going to use our discussion with the patient as an example of how we deal with uh, patient with ectasia and how we'll evaluate with uh, further exams such as uh, topography, Cassini, uh, OCT, thickness maps, epithelial maps, and uh, of course, Pentacamps, which the patient has already done. So I hope you find this interesting. I was just looking at the, um, the exams to uh, remember we had communicated by email. Yes. So they have told us that this is pellucid marginal degeneration. This was, I, this is exactly what I was told. The initial diagnosis. So uh, first of all, they, everybody thought it was keratoconus, but then they changed their mind. And, uh, Why did they think it was pellucid? To, to be honest, I, I did not understand right. the details. I think I know why. The reason why is that... Uh, well, well, definitely one reason was the thickness of the... Um, of the, the cornea. cornea is still too thick for a ker keratoconus, they, they told me. The, the major reason is that when topography devices first appeared, all the pellucid cases showed a claw-like appearance, which your topographies, the pentacans that you have done, show it here. You see, this looks like a claw. Mm -hmm. But in pellucid modular and deserration, the cornea is thinner at the inferior part, right here. Okay. So just this part of the cornea yeah, yeah, yeah. is thin, and this part of the cornea is thick. On your thickness maps, it is clear that this is keratoconus, because the cornea is thin right here. So the thinnest part of your cornea does not correspond with the steepest part of the cornea shown in the bone. So this is classic keratoconus. Is it, it's read as keratoconus by the device as well. Yeah, but this is an ultimate system I was told. Right, is it is. Correct it is, uh, but even in, the, in all the pachymetry tests that we're doing today, mm -hmm. they confirm that the thinnest part, this is a more a newer model uh, pachymetry, and here again, the thinnest part of the cornea is somewhere here. It's true that your cornea is very thick for keratoconus, but we don't know the thickness that it started from. You may have started from, let's say, 650. That's true as well. So for you now, the 560 is a big change. You may have started from 600, which is, I think, probably where you started from, 600, 590. The second thing I remember is that it's it is quite unusual for keratoconus to, to change in my age. Um, a, a huge change started in, uh, about three years ago. Right. It was it was really it was a uh, constant from my thirties to my forties to my early forties, right. and it, it started to change mass well not massively but um, significantly. Significantly. I understand. So when I was forty four, right, which is which is everybody say too old for right. keratoconus to change. It is true, but when you when you say change, you mean how you perceive your vision? Uh, yes, the vision got worse. Worse. The um, did the topography get worse? The topography got worse. Do you have older ones? Unfortunately, uh, not a shine fluke image, but right. I have topography maps. Yeah, those are not very reliable. Sorry. Those are not very reliable. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. That's the problem. The shine fluke. It, it was not. It was not correctly diagnosed until four years ago. Right. That's that's the thing. Right. You know. I'm not from a big city, I'm from the countryside, right. and uh, you know, 
doctors there that don't have the equipment? Well, it's natural. This is a very specialized center that will have all these exams. And you see how many uh, topography devices we have here. I mean, there's no center in the world that has all these topography devices. So, so I started for, for uh, like a, a, a professional with, with current commerce. Right. Uh, four years ago, I went to Berlin, I failed, I went to Nuremberg, I failed, and uh, uh, eventually I, I uh, was with uh, at the office of Dr. Neuhan in Munich. Okay, yes. Yeah, I think you know him. Yes. So Which I, one? I Thomas or... Uh, I, was not, I was not with him personally, but right. Thomas, I guess. Was. Thomas. But I, I was, I was um, examined by someone from his team. Okay. And this is the, the first word I heard from you <laughs> within that uh, yeah. office. Because I asked for a... Um, a treatment. Yes. And all I could say is um, we, we can try um, this cross linking. Yes. But it, it won't have that effect because they said because it's uh, pellucid uh, What's it, an exact name? Degeneration. Degeneration. Pellucid. Uh, uh, yeah. They PMD. I say PMD. PMD. For PMD. Sure. PMD. They PMD said for sure. by that time. They cannot really treat it like keratoconus because it's more in the in the outer in the, the outer skirts of the eye. Right. So this was there. Uh, well, right the, your maps show that the thinnest part of the cornea is near the center. So this mm. is this is one hundred percent keratoconus, in my opinion. I mean, all the tests, all the thickness mm -hmm. maps show that the thinnest part of the cornea is very near the center. So this excludes pellucid. Pellucid. We'll show you a map of pellucid. is very characteristic. The thickness maps show significant thinning all the way on the bottom of the cornea. It's a very classical picture. And in pellucid, the cornea does not bulge up. It bulges down like a teardrop because the thinnest part of the cornea thins here. Mm -hmm. So the center flattens yeah. and the bottom of the cornea sticks out. Uh -huh. So it's a teardrop. But it, it looks like a bit on my topography. Uh, the, the, the... Here, the... the in the lower part of the... Yeah, but this is not in pellucid, it's all the way down here. Oh, right. Even, and even the, further out. Right. And the thinnest part of the cornea is also here. Well, everybody who, who took a closer look so far said um, it's not... Um, typical. A, a very, a very typical yeah, picture it's not of, typical. of either, either one. Right. right. Well, that's reasonable. <laughs> the other thing is you wearing contact lenses may have changed this a little bit. Do you rub your eyes a lot? No, not much. No, okay, that's good. Let me ask you bring in here. I'll wash my hands here for a second. Okay. So unfortunately, on this exam that we'll do now, I'll take this for you to have a video. Uh, we don't... Um, yeah, another thing um, tricking your pictures, the science of images, is that you're developing a little bit of arcus, and that uh, tricks a little bit the pictures. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll see this little white shadow, you may be able to see it in the mirror, mm -hmm. uh, that you have on the bottom of the right eye. Do you know what this could be? This is, uh, this is uh, normal. It's, normal. Uh, yes, it's normal. It's not pathologic. It, your body deposits cholesterol there. It doesn't mean that your cholesterol is high. It is. It is, but even people who have normal cholesterol sometimes develop this. So the, the, the team member of Dr. Moyan, she said, yes? it's absolutely impossible that this is cholesterol. Uh, no, this is cholesterol. <laughs> you, you can read it on the internet. It's called Arcus senilis, and uh, the, it, it's completely benign. The only problem is that it tricks the sinful imaging mm -hmm. that area because uh, the light does not go yeah. through. So sinful will show that area that it's thinner. Uh, where topography, which uses only the surface reflection, mm -hmm. is not affected. Because on the reflection topography, uh, the back inside of the eye is very good. Is it going to show you have images? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're taping this for you. So the rest of the eye looks normal, except there's a little bit of arcus. Uh, and on your uh, placido disc topographies, uh, the picture will be a little bit different. So this is why, yeah. A little bit different. See here, the steepest part of the cornea is shown here on the placido disc topography. See, this is just measures the image of the surface. Yeah, this is what I have back uh, back to 2002. Right. right. Because this this picture has yeah, taken this my, is my all the, Yeah, this yeah. is other technology. But and though the sine fluke shows your cone to be a little bit more inferior, mm -hmm. but this is this is just an oblique cone. The thinnest part of your cornea is right here according to science, right here. Mm -hmm. And according to Pentacam, 
I'm sorry, OCT, these are OCT images of your thickness. Mm -hmm. But the only difference is this is only the central six millimeters. This is measuring nine millimeters. Right. This is six. So this is just the central part. We're yeah, seeing yeah, yeah. just the central part. But as far as the thinnest part of the cornea, it's again defined within, this is six, so this is about three millimeters from the center of the cornea. So the left eye is down and towards your ear, right eye is down and towards your ear, three millimeters from the center. So this is 100% oblique keratoconus, which may have not changed the last five, six years, but you may have noticed the change because when we grow older, the cornea becomes stiffer and it's less flexible. Mm -hmm. So some people with moderate keratoconus like you discover or feel their eyes are getting worse, not because they're getting worse. We can't prove this. We should have had these pictures from 10 years ago to prove it. Uh, but uh, they just change uh, in their opinion because the cornea becomes cross-linked by itself mm -hmm. and it becomes less flexible. Mm -hmm. So you notice the irregularity more. Uh, in my opinion, if this doesn't change, it doesn't need treatment. On the other hand, if you want to treat this, you could correct the myopia that you have, the astigmatism, and also prophylactically, since you have keratoconus, also do half a session of cross-linking to secure that this will not change. You have enough thickness to treat your full myopia and no, astigmatism. I'm not, I'm not too old to, to, to get no. cross-linked. No. So. We have a lady that we did, we saw her today, Greek lady, and Greeks were very much concerned that this will advance even at older age if we saw a yeah, difference. This is my, my biggest fear, yeah. to, to be honest, that it's, it's going to develop. You shouldn't worry though. Rest. Even if it does, you have so much thickness in the cornea that even if you lose two years, you can always come back and fix it. We worry if your cornea is thinner than 450. And it's right now it's 50, 550. 550. 550. So there's really no worry. If you were 23 years old and the cornea was 440, then we would tell you, do it for sure. It's imperative. Even if one in 10 chances, it won't change. Mm -hmm. So we know for 20 year olds, every 10 people that we do, one person doesn't really need it. But in order to be sure and secure that they're not gonna thin very much and require a transplant, we're probably doing more, one 10% more than we should. If the thickness is so good, and if you're functioning well, you have all the time in the world to first study if there's any change, objective change, and two, see how you feel with your lenses and the possible correction. I can show you lately that we did, um, uh, we've done uh, since, uh, we saw it today, um, and I'll show you the difference, how this changes. So this is a, a cone that's even more central than yours. Yeah. So you can see here, uh, the difference maps are more most impressive. So see her here with a lot of, uh, with a cone right here and today. And we're able to correct almost 8.6 dots. That's the difference. Yeah, and this is exactly the cone. It's like somebody shaved yeah. oh. the cone off. And this is done topography guided. So this image goes into the laser computer. Mm -hmm. We tell the computer fix this. In order to fix this, and this is what even some surgeons don't understand. In order to fix this, you don't only have to shave this off. Mm -hmm you have to treat also up here in order to make this come up a little bit. So you can I see to correct it so you can see the difference the, here, yeah. which makes this area come up a little bit. So it's not only important to take down the mountain, it's important to, to fill this up as well. And only with topography this can be done. With wavefront, you can shave it off, but you have to go deeper because you have to remove everything up to this level. So, so with topography, you can normalize your cornea. Yeah. Uh, and see how normal this cornea is now and how irregular it is here. Mm -hmm. For instance, the difference between here and here is 10 diopters, 44, 54. Now the difference from here to here is only 48.6, yeah. 49, yes. 0.4 diopters. And this gives good quality of vision. Less lines on the lights at night. Yeah. You may still have to wear glasses here. This doesn't mean that it's I'm zero. Yeah, absolutely. I, I this <laughs> to 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 uh, live without glasses. This dream I've given. It's given possible. Up, I've given up uh, well, a long possible. time ago. But I would I would be glad to uh, wear normal glasses um, or normal contact yeah. lenses within a with a yeah. reasonable range. Possible. Because you know, with my uh, astigmatism, if uh -huh. the if the um, 
the lens is mm -hmm. just moving a millimeter. Mm -hmm. You know, vision is completely right. out of shape. Right. I understand. And that's that's the main reason right. why I was thinking about. Uh, right. We'll try and get some slices from the, with the pictures of your cornea that that uh, establish the fact that this is uh, Arcus, the little shadow you have here. We can take some special uh, OCT images. It's one hundred percent Arcus. Sure. Okay. It's not uh, so, nothing else. So if this topography guy at PRK mm -hmm. is, I guess, mm -hmm. it is that easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not it's easy. It's but but why is not it isn't done in, in, in Munich, for example, or in Germany? Some centers do it in Germany. The the difference between Germany and the southern European countries, Greece, Italy, Spain, is that you have very little keratoconus. In Northern Europe, only one out of every 2,000 people has keratoconus. Mm -hmm. In Greece, one out of, out of every 40. 40? And in Cyprus, one out of 10. So we started that's all this work. A percentage. Yes, yeah. it's a huge difference. And it's the same thing in uh, Northern Africa, Egypt, uh, Turkey, uh, Lebanon. If you speak to any colleagues in the Middle East, if you read on the internet, you'll read uh, a lot about the Dubai protocol, which is our protocol adjusted with their laser. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the Athens protocol like it is, it is a topography guided PRK followed by the cross -linking. Yes, we also do cross-linking to stabilize the cornea, yeah. to make sure that the laser doesn't unstabilize the cornea. For somebody at your age, not that you're very old, but for keratoconus, you are old for mm -hmm. keratoconus. Yes. Someone can say you don't need to do the cross-linking, but in my opinion, it's good to be safe, to not do just the laser. Before cross-linking was discovered, uh, they used to do laser. Uh, even, for, even with the keratoconus? Yes. There are several reports, and they're not bad. They're not bad. But now with cross-linking, it, it doesn't make sense not to do uh, the, uh, the corrective uh, treatment. So these, these are images... Um, to give you an idea, and basically the, the the number we want to improve the most is this number here, the IHD. So this lady, the IHD was 135, 0 0.135, and this shows irregularity in regard to the visual center that the patient is using. Mm -hmm. The visual center usually in the pentacam is this little dot. Mm -hmm. See, this is yeah, the visual yeah, center, yeah, yeah. but this is the center of the cornea. Mm -hmm. So these are not always the same. So this device is able to measure the asymmetry in regard to the visual center before. It was 135, and it was labeled keratoconus stage 2 to 3. And this was in December, so we did this lady in December. And now it's four months later, and her IHD has dropped to 53. So it's almost one-third. Mm -hmm. One, probably two-fifths of what it used to be. And her keratoconus staging has dropped from 2 to 3 to 2. And if you only look at the center which the patient uses, it's probably less because the machine measures the whole cornea and, and still measures difference between here and here. But this difference is not effective for the vision because the pupil never opens this much. So the effective only difference... Only at night time, maybe. Not even at night. This is 9 millimeters. Okay. So it can open probably the biggest up to this line, this black line. This is the... Uh, the black line is the... Uh, uh, for six millimeter pupil, the black line. See, all this is nine. Mm -hmm. uh, so the black line is eight millimeters. Most people are at six, so probably somewhere between uh, four, three, somewhere between here. Most people's pupil opens up until this. And, and yours as well, because we see that your pupil with bright light, and we've calculated if your pupil is this big with bright yeah. light, with less light, uh, it's not going to open too much. It's not going to go over six and a half. Because I, I do see a decrease of like visuals at night time. Of course. Then, of course, because your pupil opens uh, and you start... To be honest, with, 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 with glasses, yes. it's a catastrophe at night And you start time. using very regular cornea. See, with this pupil, you have regular astigmatism. Mm -hmm. With a light mm -hmm. that this pupil... If the pupil is this big, yeah. then you have irregular astigmatism. Irregular. So it starts bringing in aberrations and problems with vision. The other solution is that, is that if you're happy with your glasses and your lenses, you wait. And you have all the time to wait. Your corneas are not dangerous. And I'm sure this happened when you were a teenager. 
most of the difference that you see happen between ages 15 and 21. That's where most of the change happened. Some of it may have happened since, but now we've, we've seen over... So on, on, on the topography from, for the photos from my optician, it was very stable from my 13th birthday up to 42. Really? That's unusual. But it's, we've seen it happen. We, I've, I've, I, unfortunately, I don't have any Yeah, but still, they're uh, good. Photos before that right. period of time. But, um, That's unusual. And you know what? There's always the possibility that this may be very, very, very early pellucid. But the treatment for pellucid is the exact same. The exact same treatment. Cross linking. You, you don't have any <coughs> fear or any, um, how would I say? The, the colleague from Dr. Neumann told me they don't do this kind of operation because they don't want to punch laser holes in a cornea which is already suffering from a disease. What's your opinion? I agree. If you can avoid it, I prefer not to do it. But if somebody's having problems with their everyday function, uh, it's a problem. I mean, we've we've seen many people have cornea transplant for this. But hopefully not in my stage. I, it would be illogical today for somebody to tell you have a transplant. Because when you do a transplant, you take all this and you throw it away and you put a foreign person's cornea on there, which will also have issues until you can see well. And if you can fix your own cornea to see well, of course, that's the ultimate. So in my mind, the three key things that we look for, either keratoconus or early pellucid, are the age. And age-wise, we feel comfortable. We don't feel comfortable from the fact that you have documented that your cornea was stable for 10 years and recently it has destabilized. So that, for you, is with a question mark. We have, to, we have to consider that you are 25 years old as far as the corneas are concerned, which is a good thing. So we have to say that since there's a documented change, your eyes, for some reason, are sensitive to change, even at 47, 46. So the second thing is how thin is the cornea, and there we're very good. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is how well you function with glasses or contacts. If you function very well, you can wait. If you're having problems, especially driving at night, uh, then there's an issue. It's okay with the lenses, but it's a catastrophe. With, with the glass, lenses. of course. So, to, to be absolutely honest, uh, my main concern, my main fear is that it gets worse when I get older. So, at the time, at, at this time, I'm, I'm very I'm very fine with the glasses, basically. Okay. So, wait. Uh, Check them again in a year, and if it's changed, then you have to, if it, if it is documented that the thickness has changed and the cornea has changed in a year, then in my opinion, you have to fix it. Because you don't want it, you know, in the next 20 years, it may change more. We have seen keratoconus change even in a 65 year old, but I've seen just one patient. And I've seen over 15,000 keratoconus patients. I've seen 1,000 in New York for in 10 years mm -hmm. and 14,000 in Greece. In 10 years. So this shows you how much keratoconus we see here. Okay. Um, so, but, but basically you would be you would be okay if I want a late treatment. Yeah. Yeah, we've done so there's no, no thousands. The only negative, and I want to tell you in advance of the combination treatment, is the fact that it takes a long time to heal. It's not like LASIK. Mm. So it takes and about... There's no flap. There's no flap, mm -hmm. but it takes a long time to heal. So it, it will, you will be out of work for two, maybe three weeks. And even so, for the vision to, to come to the maximum, it may take three months. But within the first three weeks, you will find a solution, even with contact lenses, to be able to function well. How, how big is the chance that something went wrong in my eyes? One in 500. There's always a chance, as it is with contact lenses. Yeah, sure. With contact lenses, Just one in a thousand, you can get an infection. Because they would. <laughs> well, the fact is that I've only got one eye I can uh, rely on 100%, which is my right one. The left one, for some unknown reason, is is only um, coming up to a vision of 60%. So why don't you for whatever reason. Why don't you fix first, then the left eye? That's what I thought. Ah, that's very reasonable. And, and only if your left eye becomes better than your right, you consider fixing your right. That's very reasonable. The oddity is that then you'll have very small prescription on your left, so you will have to wear contact lenses on your right. Because mm -hmm. you cannot 
blend low myopia in one eye and six diopters in the other eye with glasses. Now, it has to be, the difference has to be two to three diopters. If it's more, you have a different in size of images. All right. So if, if there's a big well, difference... Well, I'm used to wear contacts. Right. So then you may have to wear contacts on your right eye to match the left eye. That's the only difficulty with correcting the left eye. But it, I think it's reasonable. I mean, you think no. about these options and... No, uh, no, no, no further contraindicators for, for this no, treatment. No, no, no. And no. I think... But on the other hand, no rush. Exactly. I don't think... Uh, you know, if you were... Uh, if you were 22 year old, and I don't pick this age uh, in random, I pick it because this is usually the age that we see somebody com with the exact same complaints. Mm -hmm. 22 to 24. Usually a male, 22 to 24, who's had this since 15 years mm -hmm. old, and now is starting to bother him. So if you were a 22-year-old uh, Greek, we would tell you, you know, we give you six months to fix it because it makes it worse. And we've seen it get much worse in six months. For your thickness and your numbers, I think you can wait. And you don't seem like a person who will forget about it and go back to the doctor in 10 years. You'll do a cycle game engine in six months and you'll see the difference immediately. So that's my recommendation. Okay. The eyes look otherwise healthy. We've taped the exam for you. We'll give you all these testings to, to hold the... The Cassini is a nice new exam uh, that I think only one or two centers in Germany have it. Uh, it's this not... That's with the LED. Yeah, that's the LED. The good thing with the LED is that it uh, it uh, it does ray tracing. Not see the the uh, placido compares each circle with mm -hmm. the next. Yeah. So every so this topography is linear mm -hmm. and has the bias from this equation added to this equation to this mm -hmm. equation yeah, to this yeah, equation yeah. to this equation. On the Cassini, every three spots are ray traced. Individually, so theoretically, is more accurate for very regular corneas, but it shows the same. So your Cassini image here is the same with the topography; it's very similar. And the other thing with Cassini is also measuring backside of the cornea, which helps us a little bit. It's a nice thing to have if your diagnosis is questionable. I think the diagnosis here is obvious, but you can also keep those in record. So forget about PMD from now on. Well, you know, it doesn't matter what we call it. It's more <laughs> academic. Okay, okay. But if you ask me, I strongly insist that this is oblique keratoconus. Mm -hmm. um, some people will say, you know, it's claw-like, so it's PMD. You know, it's it's debate for meetings. For you yourself, it doesn't make a difference.